Good afternoon. This is the Chorus Call Conference Operator. Welcome, and thank you for joining the SNOM Full Year 2019 Results Conference Call. As a reminder, all participants are in listen-only mode. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. Should anyone need assistance during the conference call, they may signal an operator by pressing star and zero on the telephone. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Mr. Marco Azara, Chief Executive Officer of SNAM. Please go ahead, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and welcome to SNAM's full year 2019 results. I hope you're well and safe in these difficult times. Alessandra and the IR team are on this call with me, but we're all connected from our homes. We have tested the system multiple times, and you shouldn't notice any difference, but please bear with us if there's a glitch. Most of the people who work at SNAM are now working from home. We're in the fourth week of smart working and have extended it to our operations throughout Italy for non-essential personnel. For the essential services, like ensuring that energy continues to flow in Italy, we have put in place a maximum security protocol for people involved. And we're also in active contact with the major shippers in Russia, Libya, Algeria, to monitor risks to gas supply for Europe. The maximum security protocol I was referring to for the gas dispatching center involves running it in two-week shifts. Before the start of the shift, the whole team is tested to ensure they are COVID negative, and then they're placed into isolated accommodation we've built in the courtyard of the dispatching center, where they work and live safely 24-7 for 14 days on 12-hour shifts before being relieved by another shift. The first team entered, the, entered their, their shift on Tuesday, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our colleagues for their commitment and dedication in dealing with these unique circumstances. Meanwhile, on the field, we have suspended around half of our major 250 construction sites. We remain broadly on track on our main milestones, but we may need to cut that number further down as we progress. Looking beyond operations, we face this complex market environment with a strong financial position. Our debt has an average tenure of 5.6 years, and three-quarters of it is fixed at very attractive rates. We have 1.5 billion euros of debt rolling over this year. Of this, we have covered around 70% with pre-funding activities in 2019, and we have recently secured a new 740 million euro loan for between two and three years at zero cost. Overall, we expect limited impact from COVID-19 on our previous net income guidance of 1.1 billion euros for 2020, of course, depending on the course and length and severity of the crisis. With our board of directors, we have decided to donate 20 million euros in support of the healthcare system and the NGOs who are fighting very challenging battles right now and for which we are all extremely grateful. We are very proud to have been able yesterday to lock in a contract working very closely with some of our key international partners to be able to source internationally up to 700 ICU lung ventilators and over 1 million N95 DPI masks that we give to hospitals and doctors in Italy and the masks to our workers, our suppliers, and our partners. Turning now to our results for 2019, it was a very strong year for SNAM. Regulated revenues grew 2.6%, thanks to our continuing investment in the network and the update of the allowed return. EBITDA grew faster than revenues and was up 3.5%. This is also a result of our ongoing cost savings plan. Income from associates was up 35.8%, mainly benefiting from some exceptional items. DESTA, which was not included in 2018 results and benefited from strong consumption growth of gas in Greece. Uh, Teregas results also grew, driven by the completion of the Gasconomy D project and some one-off accounting effects. And Italgas results included a special gain 
from the consolidation of Tuscan Energia, of which SNAM's share is around 11 million euros for 2019. Overall, net income was up 8.2%, benefiting also from our relentless efforts on the optimization of our cost of debt. EPS grew 11% with the cancellation of 74 million shares in April 2019 under our share buyback program. This number does not include 34 million shares which have already been purchased and which we will propose to be cancelled at the next AGM. As you will have seen this morning, we're also going to ask the AGM for a new 500 million euro share buyback plan. In 2019, we also delivered strong progress on our ESG agenda, starting with one of the greatest challenges of our industry, which is to reduce methane emissions we've delivered a 19% reduction, which is nearly half of our ambitious 2025 target, starting from a relatively low 2016 base. To achieve this, we have changed some equipment and we've re-engineered several processes, especially those during the maintenance and replacement activities in order to be able to capture, recompress, and re-inject into the pipelines the gas that was previously being vented during these operations. We have also undertaken a broad field measurement campaign with 150,000 measurements already taken. And we plan to start a further systematic leak detection campaign in the second half of 2020. We continue to invest in our people. In 2019, we've delivered more than 114,000 hours of training and smart working roughly doubled to almost 123,000 hours and had become a key feature of our capacity to increase productivity, increase agility, and increase employee satisfaction even before uh, we're now using it more extensively due to COVID. This uh, habit of being able to smart work is indeed helping us right now, ramping up to almost 100% smart working uh, without any flaws. In fact, we are also discovering new and very effective ways of working together, even if we are physically separated. The central role of ESG in our strategy is enshrined also in our governance. We are one of the first, uh, if not the first, listed companies worldwide to introduce a board committee focused only on ESG. This is a dedicated ESG committee. As As ESG becomes a key feature of global financial markets, SNAM will increasingly benefit from its leadership in this field. On the equity side, we are already leading performers in the key sustainability indices, and over 5 billion euros of our debt already has significant ESG features embedded. Our strong results of 2019 come off the back of good progress on each of our four strategic pillars. Starting with our core business, volumes of gas grew significantly in 2019, mainly because it was cheaper to generate electricity from gas rather than coal for much of the year. This increased demand was also supplied by rapid growth in LNG, which in 2019 became extremely ample, and we received 57 ships in Panigalia compared to 21 ships in 2018. On CapEx, we completed investments for around 1 billion euros on time and on budget for the 12th year in a row. We continue to see strong demand for connections to the grid from CNG and biomethane plants. In this new business in 2019, we have signed new contracts, 87 new contracts for connections that are worth around 35 million euros. We also improved our performance on those activities and services which the regulator incentivizes us to undertake, generating 18 million of revenues compared to 15 million the year before. Moving to our international activities, TAP is around 93% complete and we're continuing work onshore and offshore for the time being. More broadly, we continue to support our associates leveraging on our expertise. For example, Derega successfully completed an eight-year 400 million euro bond, 10 times oversubscribed, at a coupon of only 0.625%. We 
we have continued to create value from our financial structures, buying back a further 597 million euros of bonds and 150 million euros of shares. This brings a total share buyback executed to date to 889 million euros. With regards to the energy transition, our strategy is progressing ahead of schedule. We have gained exposure to a number of significant growth areas. Starting with biomethane, in the sector which our long-term scenario suggests will grow to over 10 BCM in Italy, we have consolidated our role as a key enabler of the market through the acquisition of Renner Waste and the ongoing construction of the NFC plant. This puts us in a strong position to reach our 2023 objectives of more than 40 megawatts of biomethane production capacity. Turning to energy efficiency, this will be a key pillar of European and Italian decarbonization strategies. In Italy alone, there are 200 billion euros of investments planned by 2030 in this sector. Uh, we had already positioned ourselves through the acquisition of TEP, which is a leader in the residential sector. Last year, TEP acquired and is now merging TEA, a specialist in the development of combined heat and power plants, enabling it to consolidate our position in the industrial sector as well. Turning to mobility, we have signed agreements to build 107 CNG or LCNG stations. Seven CNG and three LCNG stations have already been built, and we expect to have about 45 stations in operation at the end of 2020. Regarding hydrogen, in 2019, we set up a dedicated business unit. We continue to make good progress on ensuring our assets are hydrogen compatible. We ran a second trial in southern Italy, delivering a 10% hydrogen blend to two industrial customers. We have launched a new high-ready procurement strategy for pipelines, and we're also running a hydrogen audit on existing pipelines. Early results suggest that out of, uh, of 33,000 uh, kilometers uh, of our network, around 70% is already fully hydrogen compatible, while 30% will require either some operational or some technical interventions. We have also signed... Uh, very recently, an agreement with Alstom to decarbonize uh, rail transport with hydrogen. Alstom is a global leader uh, in, in this space. We expect hydrogen to play a significant role to decarbonize, particularly the so-called hard-to-abate sectors. Overall, we expect new uh, non-regulated businesses to generate positive EBITDA this year, although this key milestone could be delayed due to COVID-19. I will now hand you over to Alessandra, who will review our international associates and give you more color on financial results for 2019. Thank you, Marco, and good afternoon, everyone. Looking at our international associates in more detail, the increase in net income contribution in 2019 versus 2018 was driven by the full year contribution of DEFSA, including the portfolio since December 2019. Its exceptional performance in 2019 is mainly linked to higher than expected volumes of gas in Greece, as commented in the past, thanks to the higher gas demand for power generation due to the accelerated lignite phase out. Please consider that part of the extra revenues will be reverted to the system through recalculation of tariffs from 2020 onwards. And it also includes the application of new tariffs applied only from September 2019. Second component was deposit options of 2019 capacity and interconnected UK in a context of a much less liquid LNG market than it is today. And good results at Terragas. Thanks to the increase in asset base, the greater net income due to the complete amortization of portion of the PPA, and a one-off effect connected to the release of a tax provision accrued in 2017, partially offset by the payment of the content fee to bondholders for the library and exercise um, executed in, uh, at the end of last year. 
with the objective of optimizing the capital structure. In February, the holding company of Serega successfully completed an eight-year, 400 million euro bond issue characterized by an extremely high demand and a very low coupon at 0.625%. In 2020, we expect a slight decrease of the contribution of international sources, mainly linked to the new regulatory period for Ferregas, the show the decree of WAC, and the normalization of the performance of debt from the UK. Distribution from Australian affiliates in 2020 is expected to be in line with 2019, while the new regulatory period will start in 2021. On the regulatory side, 2019 has been an important year with a closing and satisfactory term of the tariff reviews in Greece and France. On top of that, the ongoing review in Austria, which is due to close in the next few weeks, we will be in a position to have three to four years of regulatory stability and visibility ahead of us. On the operational side, Greece has achieved significant milestones with the completion of the Revit 2 subgrade, which has arrived in time to accommodate the large inflow of new LNG in the market, with 55 cargoes. Turning now to our ongoing efficiency plan, we deliver 51 million savings at, by the end of 2019, compared to the 2016 cost base when we started our efficiency plan, and we are on track for our target of overall savings of around 65 million by 2023. Efficiency initiatives offset the cost increase due to the higher operational complexity of the transportation business, with more kilometers managed versus 2016, and the increase of storage capacity made available with the engine operation of Bordolano, as well as final impact for vehicle gas uh, spin off. Core business costs are therefore lower today than in 2016. This compensates increase in other uh, no core business, including uh, and, and the introduction of the new businesses in energy transition and new initiatives. In 2020, we expect to reach around 60 million of savings compared to 2016, thanks to the continued trends in the reduction of external expenses, the insourcing of some operation activities, and further savings from contract renegotiation. Adjusted even in 2019, was up 4 million over the same period of the prior year. This reflects higher regulated revenues, mainly due to the increase in allowed remuneration, tariff routes, and the ramp up in regulated services, which achieved a further 3 million versus 2018. Since the launch of this product at the end of 2016, we have reached a contribution of 18 million revenues. The effect of cost capping just commented, higher DNA due to the capitalization of new assets in the perimeter for around 40 million, and write off related to working progress in the transport business due to the cancellation of feasibility studies and engineering costs related to some past projects. Other negative components include different accruals to the release of some provisions some transaction costs, and energy costs related to Panigalia, which we expect to offset uh, going forward. Positives such as higher sales of materials and lower CO2 costs. Adjusted net profit in 2019 was 1 billion and 93 million euros, up 83 million compared to last year, driven by the positive performance of our operations, lower net interest expenses of 30 million, thanks to the number of actions um, carried out last year, including uh, the liability management exercises and the effects of bond rollover. As explained, the higher contribution uh, from associates and higher taxes due to higher free tax profit. Tax rate was 25.5% on earnings before tax, including associates, and 26, but to 26.2 uh, in prior year. Turning now to our cash flow. Cash flow from operations amounted to 1.5 billion euros, with 20, 21 million of negative impact from working capital movements, mostly related to the payment in, fer in favor of capital service energetic and the entire for overcharges and penalty cash in, in the prior years, 
and 38 million of other tariff-related items, of which 86 negative due to overcharging and penalties, and 55 positive uh, due to additional tariff components. Operating cash flow cover net investments, net financial investments related to energy transition, dividend payments reaching a net debt at year end of 11.9 billion, also including uh, circa 40 million of share buyback and the cost of the liability management exercise um, carried out in December. Turning to that is now that structure and the reduction in the cost of debt. Our average cost of debt in 2019 was down from 1.5 to 1.1, with 165 million of total net financial charges. This, thanks to the bond rollover effect, with replacement of higher coupon expired in 2019, with new funding, such as the 500 million climate action bonds, and 450 million product placement issued in the first half of 2019 at significantly lower rates. Continuous strong treasury optimization efforts, including 2 billion of commercial paper programs fully utilized at December 19 at negative cost, and September 19 pre-funding for 2020 maturities with 1.1 billion composed by SNAM longest ever zero coupon and its first 15 years issuance. SNAM is well positioned to cope with the current volatile market conditions, leveraging on new financing secured over the last couple of weeks with relationship banks for more than 700 million euro, 3.2 billion of undrawn pool credit lines. All maturity has been extended by one year in July, and they now expire in 2023 and 2024. Significant cash on at end for approximately 3 billion euro, and a maturity profile which is well spread over time, also thanks to the recent liability management transaction completed in December. This exercise is the last of five for a total amount of 5.5 billion euro of bonds targeted, which allowed to reduce our funding costs and exposure to potential load increase. We have the four low refinancing needs in 2020, and we also benefit from a relative relevant weight of fixed debt, fixed rate debt in our medium and long term um, uh, package. As I like it by March, post sustainable finance is a key part of our funding strategy, and we will increase its share over time. This is consistent with our ESG strategy and helps to diversify our investor base, which is showing a strong interest for these instruments. In February 2019, SNAP issued its first climate action bond and being the first in Europe. And today has already allocated over half of that 500 million funding. In addition, we have reached the target set on our 3.2 billion sustainable loan that for achieving a step down in the margin of 2.5 basis points. Finally, in 2019, NAM has signed 265 million euro over three years financing with European investment banks with a fixed rate of circa 1% and a maturity of over 10 years. Thanks to all of the both, we target a reduction of circa 10 million in net financial charges in 2020, coherently with guidance we gave in November. Thanks for your attention. We will now be pleased to answer your questions. May you ask, may ask you to speak clearly and slowly, and we, um, and we will now take all of your questions. Thank you. Excuse me. This is the Chorus Call Conference operator. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. To remove yourself from the question queue, please press star and two. Please pick up the receiver when asking questions. The first question comes from Mr. Javier Suarez of Medio Banca. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon to, to everyone, and, uh, and many thanks. And I hope you, that you and your families are, are all well. Uh, three, three questions on, on my side. The first one is on, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, obviously the uh, a uh, difficult ongoing situation and the effect that this may have on, on companies, uh, starting with CapEx deceleration. 
So the thing that I would like to understand is if you can give us some more color, uh, some more uh, light on the possible impact on your capex coming from that deceleration. Obviously, this is all related to the length in the crisis, but it seems that the, the length is going to be longer than initially expected. So I just wanted to, to know how this could affect your business plan and your um, cap- capacity to deploy capita, uh, capex and, and all the things that has been included in your uh, November business plan. Second question is related. Uh, it's a related question. The government uh, has said that it's going to announce in, in April a decree on growth and reconstruction. So I just wanted uh, to, to hear your, your proposal on that. I guess that Italy is lacking significant infrastructure. Um, um, there is plenty of capital deployed on the infrastructural side. So I just question if you can give us uh, a constructive proposal on how infrastructure players like Islam can help with the economical recovery. And then the final, the third and final question is on the, uh, the EGM and the dividend payment. Obviously, uh, the EGM is scheduled to come around for 18 of April. Uh, 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 and the dividends should be paid um, uh, the, 20, the 24th of June, if, if I'm not wrong. So I just wanted to, uh, to, to give some light on, on the possible uh, delay on that annual general meeting and the effect that this may have, if any, on the dividend payment. Many thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Xavier. Uh, on the COVID impact, as I said, we have now reduced uh, about half of our 250 sites throughout Italy. The uh, biggest uh, project, which is TAP, is ongoing. The impact on the bottom line from the guidance, as I said, will be limited. Of course, uh, it's early days to understand the full length and scope and also to understand if we need to have uh, further uh, closures and further reduction. Um, Most of the impact would be associated from a bottom line perspective to TAP, and it would be felt in 2021. As you know, uh, we uh, have around 50 million euros uh, on TAP in 2021. We're now confirming startup at the end of the year. The works are progressing without any glitch, uh, both onshore and offshore for the time being. We will enter in the second part of the year a delicate phase of commissioning which is a time when many suppliers have to come together and work, uh, and that may, uh, if if there are still restrictions or difficulties in in working together, uh, that may uh, pose some additional challenges that we, at this point, uh, still expect to deal with. And so for now, we would like to confirm uh, the start of the step in in 2020, but I would say as a single project, that would have the greatest impact on um, uh, 2021. Uh, regarding the plan. Um, On the CapEx itself, I think we can now assume uh, something like 200 million uh, of uh, of deferral. Uh, On your second question, which is a very interesting one, around the uh, opportunity for Italy to uh, really start uh, an aggressive uh, CapEx and infrastructure build, uh, we, as you have heard us several times say, we're very supportive of this. We think there are many projects uh, that can be accelerated. We think the permitting on on many of these infrastructure projects still takes too long. And so uh, it could well be an opportunity for the government to streamline uh, some of the approval processes to get some of the projects that have already been uh, decided to uh, that that they're necessary to just get get them um, get them going. Uh, of course, we also have our, our issue around the depleted assets that were in discussions with the regulator on, on how to uh, bring some of that forward uh, as well, and we expect feedback on, on this front in the second half of the year. On the AGM, we are following events like you are. We are looking to see what the government uh, asks uh, companies uh, to do. Uh, so there is uh, some logistical issues with the AGM, and then there's a political question around some of the AGMs. Uh, we would like to do everything we can to uh, confirm at this point the uh, June dividend payment. Thank you. Excuse me. We will take two participants' questions before management answers. So we have a question from Enrico Bartoli of Maine First. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. 
Yes, hi, good afternoon, and uh, first, uh, thanks for taking my question. The first question is related um, uh, still uh, to, the, to the COVID-19 emergency, uh, in particular on the OPEX, if it's possible to have uh, uh, an idea of what you expect uh, the, the impact could be of the extraordinary measures that you are taking in your organization. And uh, related to the OPEX also, uh, and to the 2019 results, uh, I, I realized that there was a significant uh, drop in uh, the operating cost in, uh, in the fourth quarter of last year. I wonder how much this can be considered a one-off, uh, if you can give us an indication of the, uh, let's say, a clean uh, OPEX base that we can consider for 2020. Um, a second one is related uh, uh, to the dividend policy. From your comments, you see that the financial situation of the company is very strong. Uh, you also uh, expect uh, a limited impact from the emergency on uh, your revenues. Uh, so um, I wanted to hear some comments on the sustainability of the dividend policy of the next years, so considering the current situation. And the third one is related to the buyback program, if you uh, expect to continue to go on with it. Uh, over the next few months. Thank you. Okay, so, so uh, on sir? the op- oh, Go ahead. I apologize, sir. Uh, the next group of questions come from Olivia Van Dusselare of Exane. Please go ahead. Yes, good, good morning, and, and again, thank you very much for, for taking the time uh, these days to, um, to answer our questions. Uh, I just had one more question um, compared to what has already been asked. It's, um, it's coming back to a bit on, uh, on hydrogen. Uh, so I think you said that around uh, 70 or 75 percent of your network, uh, you would consider it to be hydrogen ready uh, as of now. Uh, for the remainder of it, you, you talk about some operational or technical adjustments. Um, does, that, does that imply that you actually believe that, that your whole potential capex opportunity on hydrogen for you of, over time would, would be relatively limited? Or, uh, or, or could you maybe help us to quantify a little bit uh, what that might represent? Thank you. Okay, so I will uh, start with uh, Enrico's question and answer Oliver's on the um, on the COVID. I think you you have the uh, 20 million that we talked about, which is uh, what we will give, uh, let's say, as a non-profit, uh, and, and we the, the tax treatment of that is is going to be also a function of some of the um, rules that are being that are being passed right now. Uh, but that's 20 million. Uh, one off uh, we probably have a few million of extra costs linked to uh, supply of uh, the masks and uh, uh, extra year but I, I would say it's negligible uh, optics um, I think the smart working is actually generating savings uh, that so I, I would assume that the saving we have on the logistics of, of moving around and, and some people uh, travel some some travel expenses will kind of offset the extra uh, security costs that we are facing. On on the uh, opex base and the cost cutting, I think you should refer to uh, the slide that Alessandra uh, showed earlier with our uh, achievements to date and uh, and uh, and uh, in our plan you have clear guideline for our expectations. On the dividend, our dividend um, uh, policy is sound, and uh, at this point we don't expect any change uh, whatsoever to our dividend, keeping in in mind that over the last four years we have been very significantly uh, lowering um, the payouts by having uh, EPS uh, significantly outperform the growth uh, of, of the dividend per share. Buyback, we will ask AGM for fi- another 500 million approval. And we still have some left over from the previous year, 500 million, of which we've only spent 150 million. And we will keep the market posted, uh, as we always do, on buybacks as they occur. Oliver, on your hydrogen question, I, I'm, um, as you as you probably know, I'm um, confident that hydrogen will play a bigger role that, than uh, we are uh, assuming uh, today. Uh, that's really because of, of the effectiveness and ease with which you can store and transport renewable energy through hydrogen compared to any other uh, existing means. 
And we don't know exactly what shape the market will take. Some people uh, assume that you will go and produce hydrogen where the sun uh, shines more or the wind blows stronger uh, and then build new or convert existing infrastructure to bring that hydrogen over long distances. Other people have a more distributed model where you have uh, clusters of electrolyzers uh, that are kind of around existing infrastructure. Um, other people think there will be dedicated uh, new pipelines uh, for hydrogen. So I think what we're saying is we are in good shape. A big part of our RAB is kind of hydrogen ready. There still remains a significant uh, amount of CapEx to be done to make it fully hydrogen compliant. And remember always we have all the replacements that we need to carry out uh, as we amortize, a lot of our assets are fully amortized. And so as those replacements are hydrogen um, enabled, uh, they become uh, easier to do, more compelling, and I think more uh, urgent as well. I hope I've answered your questions. Maybe, Marco, if I, if I may, on, on the um, OPEX for last year, uh, in addition to what I said before, uh, the world... Uh, a combination of a couple of things which impact labor costs, which were a positive in 2019, which we don't expect in 2020. One is related to the final calculation of those employees that uh, enjoy Article 4 for early retirement, which ultimately released um, a provision that hasn't been used. And the second has been, is related to a slower pace of uh, turnaround between people going on, on, on early retirement and new uh, entry, which effectively uh, reduce labor costs, but postponing it to, uh, to the future of years. The next group of questions comes first from Maike Decker of Bernstein and then James Brand of Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you very much for taking my question. Um, Coming back to the guidance for 2020, um, is there um, so thank you for giving a number? Um, actually, I think that's very helpful and it should calm, should hopefully calm the market. Can I just ask a little bit around the flex? So, what, um, if, what, how much could it be a little bit higher or a little bit lower uh, in terms of uh, sensitivity? Uh, what is the flex around that number? Thank you. Mr. Brand, your line is open for your group of questions, sir. Hi. Uh, yeah, I had uh, two questions. Uh, but first of all, I just want to um, wish um, you and um, your employees and, and your families good health at this um, obviously very difficult uh, time. Uh, the, the, the first question is um, on um, some of the things that have been in the press around holidays on utility bills in, in parts of Italy and not anticipating that that's going to impact on you, but maybe you could just comment to the extent that there's information. I'm sure Anna will be asked the same this evening on, on my call, but maybe you could just comment to the extent that there's information available on how that, how that would work and how you anticipate uh, that working. And then the second question is um, just on the kind of risk of uh, deflation. Um, hopefully it, it won't happen, but uh, break-evens have dropped pretty dramatically in implying deflation in Italy over the, the next few years. And the, the RAB, as far as I understand it, would uh, be de derated if, if, if we had a deflation environment. And just whether you've had any conversations with the regulator around that, because it seems like an area that um, maybe if things got worse, the regulator might be prepared to possibly kind of step in um, and maybe commit that in, in exceptional circumstances like this, the, the RAB wouldn't actually be um, deflated. Um, so maybe some thoughts on that would also be of interest. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so on on the 2020 guidance, as I said, I think uh, we we gave a guidance of 1.1 billion for the net income. Uh, we say the impact uh, is limited. By limited, we mean uh, I would say very low, single digit at this point. And as I mentioned, it's early days to understand how deep and, and how protracted uh, some of the shutdowns will be. Uh, and then um, what I said earlier applies to 2021 
and to tap and, and any month of delay is just the twelfth of um, of the fifty million because it's uh, it's quite linear on the on the holidays uh, on utility bills there's been two separate uh, rumors one around uh, some of the suppliers asking to uh, have uh, basically working capital funding to cover for their own customers that don't pay them. Um, and uh, I think that, that would not impact us, but that kind of a, could be a working capital issue for some of the suppliers. And then there's been discussion to take um, a reduction of some of the uh, system costs, but this, these uh, wouldn't apply to, to us um, based, based on our uh, conversations. Uh, on the deflation risk, uh, the whack, of course, is real. We haven't had any discussion with the regulator on this. As you remember, the formula that they use uh, to calculate the inflation um, is um, is a formula that has a time lag in it. So there's uh, there's I think time uh, to work all that out. But I think overall we remain uh, nicely hedged, even in a, um, a deflationary. Uh, environment for the time being. And, and if I may, just to add on this last point, uh, we are currently defining with the current inflation uh, tariff for 2021. So by the time that environment, I mean, the, the first time we may have the scenario where we have a, a significant lower inflation, which is, as Marco just said, is as, uh, as, as the benefit of a real whack, it will be in 2022. So on the revenue side, we're pretty safe. The next question is from Stefano Gambarini of Equida. Please go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Few question, if I may. First of all, at the slide 11, uh, where we, uh, you recorded this uh, negative impact from uh, working capital, 220 million euro, when you expect the uh, absorption of this, uh, that the the the. the um, a positive uh, recovery of these 220 million in the coming years. The second, regarding your um, talks with uh, with the authority, the authority uh, decided a, an analysis on all uh, fully deposited assets of uh, SNAM. Probably this was already supplied to them uh, by you at the end of uh, 2019. Could give us some colors uh, what is happening on this topic and. Uh, uh, still uh, with uh, um, talks with uh, the authority regarding the output-based incentives that are included in your business plan when you expect uh, uh, some novelties on, on that. Finally, if I'm not wrong, uh, in the past, uh, during 19, you announced that you were interested in the rover pipeline in Texas. Uh, so many novelties about that. Many thanks. So at this time, there are no other questions registered. Okay, great. So I will take um, maybe the last three, and Ali, I will leave you um, the one on the working capital. On the fully depreciated assets, you are correct. As I mentioned, uh, at the end of last year, we submitted a proposal to the regulator outlining the approach, the methodology that we use to rank uh, the priority of the interventions that we would like to do to begin accelerating on the replacement front. Uh, we are in these days in active dialogue with the regulator. This dialogue will result in a consultation document that, as I mentioned earlier, we expect to be published in the second half um, of the year. Uh, also, uh, regarding the output-based incentives, we are in constant uh, dialogue with the regulator to uh, identify um, opportunities that are win-win uh, for the market, for consumers, for the regulator, and, of course, uh, for us. Uh, on Rover, as you know, we don't comment on um, specific uh, situations and opportunities. Clearly, we are looking uh, at the market right now, looking at the low um, energy costs uh, of, of gas and, um, and oil and, and looking at what's happening uh, in the market. Uh, regarding our own um, situation, uh, as you know, our um, top line is protected from a lower demand case, and that 
cap uh, is 9 million euros is the maximum loss that we could have uh, in the situation in which we have a lower demand in Italy. Ale, over to you for the working capital. Thank you. Uh, yes, I think we, as usual, these relate to tariff related items, and before we expect uh, uh, the extra uh, swings that are coming to 2019 to revert over the next uh, couple of years. So, this one under the effect will be neutralized uh, over the next couple of years. For any further questions, please press star and one on your telephone. Mr. Alvara, there are no questions registered at this time, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your time today and listening to us. And as always, our IR team is available to take on any further questions. And good luck to everyone. Thank you. Bye.